All right, Sunday school is dismissed with Tanya. Um, you can go upstairs and let us stand um, this morning as we get ready and welcome our pastor. How many of us are ready to receive the message this morning? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many know God is great? Amen. He is greatly to be praised. Amen. Glory to God. I just want to mention, I thank God for all the visitors today, but I do want to mention Brother Bill, my brother in the Lord, who um, Bill's a very talented musician. He loves the Lord with all of his heart. I've known Bill since before I was a pastor, well over um, 25 years or so ago. Right, Bill? Praise God. So we're glad he's joining us today. Amen. Uh, worshiping the Lord. And we just want to welcome him and all of our visitors. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. If you would, open up your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 in the Word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Last week I started a message on, are you living your life in the fear of the Lord? Amen? Somebody say the fear of the Lord. Now church, how many know as you're turning in your Bibles that to walk in the fear of the Lord is where it's at? Amen? If you walk in the fear of the Lord, you reverence God, you respect God, you respect the things of God, you respect the men of God, the woman of God, you expect everything that God is doing, His people, amen? When we're walking in the fear of the Lord, we have wisdom. In fact, the beginning, amen, if we, if, if we have the fear of the Lord, that is the beginning of wisdom. It is the beginning of understanding. If we have a prideful, rebellious spirit, as believers are a know-it-all spirit, well, I've heard that before, you know, don't tell me anything new, or nobody's going to tell me what to do. How many of you know we're not going to have any victory at all in our lives? And the enemy's going to work with that. He's going to throw his fiery darts, amen, and he's going to continue to try to throw his fiery darts in us that we're somehow better than everyone else and so forth and so on. But how many you know the fact of the matter is, the Bible says to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will what? will lift us up. Amen? How many know God is the only one who can lift us up? Amen? If we try to lift ourselves up, we're going to be in big trouble. Amen? So I just want to, I just want to you know, at the outset of this message, I'm going to quickly review what we talked about last week without getting into too much detail. But I really want you to take this message home in your heart. Amen? I mean, as we as believers, the Bible teaches that in the last days, and I believe that we are in the last days. How many of you believe that we're in the last days? Amen? In the last days, there's going to be a spirit of disrespect. If you think about it, even uh, I believe 2 Timothy, uh, 1 Timothy rather, chapter 3 talks about that, um, uh, that kids will not obey their parents. They won't, reverend, they won't respect their parents. And as we see in, in, you know, if you go in a department store, Walmart, whatever, a supermarket, you see the kids almost uh, telling their parents what to do. How many know that's backwards? You see teachers that are being disrespected in the school system, amen? You see God being disrespected. You see people breaking fences down upon God's house in churches, amen? Because they want to take a shortcut instead of walking around to the other street. You see all these things that are absolutely disrespectful. And how many know the Lord doesn't want that? Amen? He wants us to reverence Him. Even if nobody else is reverencing the Lord, how many know we need to reverence God? We need to hold him in awe. The Bible says that our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name in Matthew 6. Amen. Hallowed means to reverence, to respect, to honor, to adore, to sing a song to him, to praise him, to magnify his mighty name. That's how we get his attention. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's how we enter into his courts. That's how we enter into his, 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 his place. Amen. Where he's at in the name of Jesus. If you would follow along, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, reading 6 through 11 in the Word of God. I'm reading the New Living Translation today. And um, the Bible tells us, amen, and if you're there, say amen. Just want to make sure you're following along here, amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting with verse 6, down to verse 11. The Bible says, so we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. That is why we live by believing and not by seeing. Yes, we are fully confident and we would rather be away from these bodies, for then we will be at home with the Lord. Look at verse 9. So our aim is to please Him always, whether we are here in this body or away from this body. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve, for the good or evil we have done in our bodies. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we just ask for your uh, anointing. I pray, Lord, that you'd speak through me today. 
I pray, Lord God, that I would decrease as you increase. I pray, Father God, that you just have your perfect way and will with every single person here. I pray, Lord God, if there's any doubt concerning their relationship with you, that you remove that doubt today in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord, your word, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. The book of Malachi says, Lord God, you do not change. Your word does not change. People change, societies change, time changes things, but Lord, you do not change. Your word is the same it, as, as it is today, as it was a long time ago. And I just pray that you just move by your spirit, move on our hearts and in our lives. Lord, help us to reverence and respect you in all things. And I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. We talked about last week, and I just want to kind of catch up if you weren't here last week, amen. Uh, that, how many know that all people are going to be judged by God after death? That is a saint in the sinner. What am I talking about? The Christian is going to be judged by Jesus Christ concerning what we have done in these bodies. What we have said as believers. Once we receive Jesus in our heart as our Lord and Savior, how many know we don't belong to ourselves anymore? God is, Jesus is our Lord, meaning that He owns us now. Amen? You see, that's why we got to strip away our pride and not do our own thing. we got to be doing God's thing. We got to say, Lord, I want to obey you in what you're saying to me. I want to obey you and live my life and be pleasing to you as long as I'm on this earth. Amen? When we get our rewards in heaven, how many of you know it's going to be about what we did for Jesus while we're here on this earth? It's not going to be about what we did for ourselves. Somebody say, Praise God. Amen? Glory to God. So all of us are going to be judged. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27, And just as it is destined that men die only once, and after that comes judgment. So that means the person who is not a Christian, who has lived this life, who has never received Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, when they die, they will be judged by God the Father. He will judge them for everything they have done in their bodies as well. But this judgment is not whether you're saved or not. This judgment is before you get cast into the lake of fire. That is the white, white, great, great white throne judgment. And that's the one God the Father is going to be judging people that have never received Jesus. Amen. It will be a sad situation when people even watching by community television or on YouTube seeing this message are sitting here in the pews and saying, well, I'll accept Jesus one of these days. I'm not quite sure I buy that. After all, you know, over here in the East there's other religions and there's other religions over, over there. And, you know, I don't know if I quite buy that. How I many you know the fact of the matter is that God is real? The fact of the matter is heaven is real, that hell is real. And the fact of the matter is that God is true. The fact of the matter is that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on the cross to shed his precious blood so that we could receive him as our sacrifice, amen? To be our personal Lord and Savior. So Jesus, you lived on this earth perfectly. You never sinned one time. You were in all points tempted as we are, but yet not yet without sin, the Bible says, amen? He never sinned. He's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen? And praise God, when we receive Him as our personal Lord and Savior, we say, Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I am not perfect. I admit that I am not in your perfect will. Amen? I need a Savior, and I bow my knee to you, Jesus, and I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. I invite you into my life. You now are my Lord. The Bible says if we confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. That's Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Amen? The Bible talks a lot about the heart. Amen? How many know we can believe things with our head or with our heart? Well, Pastor, what are you talking about? If we believe things with our head, it's, uh, it's, everything's on the surface. You know, we change our mind and we, we don't really care. We make no commitments and so forth. Amen? But when you believe in God, it's with your heart, not your head. Deep down within the fiber of your very being, in your soul, you say, Lord, I believe that you exist. I am living for you. I know I'm going to, be home to, I'm going to go home to be with you once I die. Because to be absent from the body for the Christian is to be present with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, how many of you know that's good news? Yes. Now, this life has a lot of disappointments, doesn't it? Yes. It's got a lot of sorrows. Sometimes people get disease, and I'm so thankful to listen to the sister's testimony concerning her getting cancer and God healing that cancer. Yes. I mean, our Lord can heal as well as save. Amen. Amen. Whenever you find out somebody has cancer, don't say that's it, they're going to go ahead and die. You just start praying. You claim the word of God over them in the name of Jesus. That the blood of Jesus, that by his stripes, we are healed. The enemy comes in and says there's no hope. God comes in and says there is hope. Amen. Because how many know he's the master physician? Glory be to God. So the next point I want to make is this, that I talked about last week. As Christians, every word we say as believers is going to be judged. 
Now, how many know we're not supposed to talk negatively about our brothers or sisters or anyone? The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 14, don't criticize other Christians. You've never been in their, in their shoes, amen. You've never been what they're going through. Besides that, whenever we judge somebody else, we're actually taking ourselves and putting ourselves in God's seat. That's wrong. Amen? How many of you know we got to judge ourselves? The Bible definitely tells us to judge ourselves. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. The Bible says examine yourself to see if you are truly in the faith. Amen. How many of you know we've got to judge ourselves and we've got to let God judge us? But how many of you know, praise God, we don't have no business judging anybody else? Amen. We also talked about last week saying no to sin, get rid of bad sinful habits. How I many you know we're people, uh, we're creatures of habits, amen? We have all kinds of habits we do every day. Isn't that right? We can have good habits in our lives or bad habits in our lives. What's a good habit? Getting to church early. What's a good habit? Reading the word every day. What's a good habit? Praising the Lord, amen, on a regular basis, just talking to him. What's, what's a good habit? Amen. Just going ahead and just thanking God every time you wake up in the morning. Lord, thank you for letting me wake up another morning. You kept my heart beating throughout the entire night. Many people today, this morning, did not wake up. But Lord, you have allowed me to wake up. I give you glory for that. Help me in this body to glorify your name somehow and in some way or ways today. In Jesus' name. Amen. When you go to bed at night, Lord, give me a good night's sleep tonight, Lord God. And I pray when I get up tomorrow morning, I could just be a vessel used of you. Amen. Praise be to God. Last week we talked about what is a religious spirit. A religious spirit is a person who goes through the motions as a, quote, Christian, but is not really, really saved. Uh, a person with a religious spirit is somebody who, who maybe has a lot of head knowledge. They might have received God, Jesus, in their head, not their heart. Now, remember... Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, you've got to believe concerning God in your heart, not your head. Big difference there. Your mind, your emotions, your will, everything in the fiber of your being, receiving Jesus Christ and believing in him. Amen. Believing in him so much that your lifestyle has been changed. Believing in him so much that certain people you don't want to hang out with no more. That kind of pull you down, amen? amen? Believing in him so much that no matter what anybody else does, whether this person backslides, that pastor backslides, or this evangelist goes by the wayside, you're still going to follow Jesus. Oh amen. You know, how I many know Jesus is not voted and he's not voted out? He's not a Republican, he's not a Democrat, he's not independent. How I many you know he's the King of Kings, he's the Lord of Lords, and he always will be forever and ever and ever? Amen. amen. Somebody say praise God. See, the problem with us in America is we don't understand what kingdom principles mean. Because we're democratic, we vote people, we vote our presidents. Do you follow me? A kingdom is the king is the ruler, he's the boss. We're the servants and that's how it is. <laughs> Amen? So in other words, we've got to understand that we're servants of our most high God. That praise God, whatever Jesus says goes. Amen. He's our Lord. Amen. He's our master. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible said, talks about living in the fear of the Lord is shown in our life by how you treat God's people, other Christians, and pastors, and so forth. Amen. We talked about it's manifested in how you treat your spouse. Somebody say spouse. Spouse. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7 says, In the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should, so your prayers will not be hindered. So what's the opposite? You don't treat her like you should, your prayer is going to be hindered. What does that mean? This is what it means to me. This is the cross, amen? We have, a, we have a, um, a vertical relationship with God. Amen. Praise the Lord. We also have a horizontal relationship with other people. If our horizontal relationship with other people is not doing very well, then our relationship with God, our vertical relationship, is not doing very well. Somebody say glory to God. Amen. You mean, Pastor, I can't hate this person and hold a grudge against them and still say I love God? That's correct. That's what the Bible says. Isn't that right? So if you hate God who created a person in his image, you hate a person that has been created in God's image, and, and you say you love God, the Bible says you're a liar. The Bible says we keep no grudges in our hearts against anyone. We've got to forgive people quickly. How I many know we're going to be offended? Whether a Christian, don't, don't say to yourself, well, I'm, I'm sick of being offended as a Christian. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to backslide. I'm getting away from God. I don't want no relationship with him anymore. You're still going to be offended even if you're not a Christian. 
What you do with the offense is what happens in your life concerning defeat or victory. You take the offense and you give it to the Lord and forgive that person. Even if they're 100% wrong, you give it to the Lord. He's going to deal with that. The Bible says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. But if you're ready to barbecue somebody because they tried to barbecue you and you're retaliating, then what's happening is your prayers are being hindered to God. So in other words, your relationship is, is stopped with God. And at the same time, you're holding this grudge. And the, the enemy is going to have that root of bitterness, the Bible talks about, growing in your heart and mind. Every time you think of that person, you're going to rehearse that. And all of a sudden, you're going to want to kill them. That's why the Bible tells us that our, our, our thinking, our, you know, our thought life is so powerful. Amen? Amen. If, if we think about hate all the time, eventually we're going to want to kill that person. If you're thinking about going to bed with another woman other than your spouse, you're going to eventually commit adultery. If you're thinking, if you're watching something that's going to feed on that in your mind, and I don't care if you've been walking with God for 105 years, you're still going to be affected by that. See, a lot of prideful Christians, oh, I can take it, I can go see an X-rated movie, it won't affect me. Yes, it will. Or R-rated or PG or whatever. <laughs> Amen? Somebody say glory to God. So how many you know, praise God, you know, I'm not into legalism. I don't like legalism. Neither did Jesus in his day. The Pharisees were into legalism. They weren't even walking with God. They weren't saved. They did everything right. They were very religious, but they were going to hell. Legalism is basically keeping all the rules and making you feel real bad and condemned all the time and, and, and self-condemnation and shoving you down and down and down. But yet the Bible says there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not according to the flesh but according to the Spirit, Romans 8 and 1. Amen? So how many you know, praise God, if we're walking according to the Spirit of God, there's no condemnation, there's no guilt because let me tell you something, that five-letter word guilt will kill you. Guilt. What has guilt done to people? Amen? How many know the Spirit of God is free? Glory to God. And He makes us free. Glory, hallelujah, glory be to God. Amen. God is such an awesome God. It's manifested in, in how we fear the Lord. It's manifested in how we treat our pastor besides our spouse. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. We left off here last week. Obey your spiritual leaders and be willing to do what they say. For their work is to watch over your souls. And God will judge them on how well they do this. Give them reason to report joyfully about you to the Lord and not with sorrow, for then you will suffer for it too. Amen. Somebody say glory to God. Now if you know Pastor Craig for a while, you know that I want to see you in church every Sunday. Amen. You know, I'm, I'm praying that, you know, nobody has to work Sundays anymore. And when you fill out a new application, write on it, no Sundays. Hallelujah. You can't serve both mammon and God is what the Bible teaches, doesn't it? Somebody say praise God. Amen. So we have to know and understand the way we treat God's people is where we make it or break it. Whenever somebody stands behind this pulpit to minister the word of God, I'm praying for that person all week long. I'm saying, Lord, that person's going to give a message from you today. And I'm going to be listening. I'm going to be taking notes. I'm going to bring my Bible. And I'm going to receive what you say through that individual. I don't care if they're, you know, man or woman, if they, you know, if they got jeans on, they got whatever, you know, how they're dressed, whatever the case is. How many, you know, praise God, we got to receive the word of God. Hallelujah. To the same degree that you expect something when you walk in a church service is the same degree that you're going to walk out with it. So if we came to church today expecting nothing, then we're going to walk out with nothing. If we came to church in faith saying, I'm going to receive something from the Lord today, hallelujah, I'm looking forward to it, we're going to walk out with, with something. Amen. It's expectation. Amen. Somebody say glory to God. Guys, when your husbands and your wives come up to you and say, honey, I'm expecting. What does that mean? I'm expecting to have a baby. That is after or before you passed out. But anyway, <laughs> if it wasn't planned, I ought to hope for, amen. You're expecting in approximately nine months time at full term, you're going to be at the hospital delivering a beautiful child that has been created by God. Hallelujah. Isn't that right? Yeah. So you're expecting. How many of you know we've got to come to church pregnant? 
I don't mean physically now. Don't get me to, <laughs> spiritually pregnant, waiting because I'm expecting. Amen. I'm expecting to hear from God. I'm expecting to worship Him. I'm expecting to minister and do my work for the Lord. I'm expecting for God to move by His Spirit. Amen? Amen? You'll be interested what you expect. It draws. Amen. You see, faith and fear, they deal the same type of way. If we have faith in the Lord and we're expecting, that faith is going to manifest what we're praying for. In other words, it's going to bring God's blessings to us. It's like calling up in faith and it's going to stop Jesus and it's going to get his attention and say, look at that sister down there. Look at that brother down there. They have faith. I'm, they got my attention right now. What do you want? You got it in the name of Jesus. Amen. But fear works the same way. You see, if you're fearful about something, then the enemy, Satan, starts to prey on that, P-R-E-Y, not A-Y. And he starts to throw those fiery dots in, uh, in your mind, in your heart, amen. Then all of a sudden you fear, and what you're fearing for is attracting like a magnet from the enemy's camp into your life. You ever hear somebody say, you know, I'm really afraid. I, I, I just don't know. I hope I don't get cancer. I don't, I, I, I'll probably get cancer when I'm older. I, I just don't. You're confessing that. It's coming your way. Yeah. One time somebody came up to me. It was flu season. They says, Pastor Craig, have you got the flu yet? So I looked at him and I says, wow, well, your expectations are high for me. <laughs> I said, you say yet. No, I'm not getting the flu in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Period. <laughs> Amen? So have you been depressed in your life yet? <laughs> Amen? Praise God. How I many you know we got to walk in the Spirit of God? we got to walk according to the Word of Almighty God. Amen? Praise be to God. Our daily habits are so important, church. Amen? How I many you know that we got to stay focused on the Word of God intentionally? Now, I was thinking about this as I was praying about this message this past week. The things we do as Christians need to be intentional. They don't just happen. Amen? So said, she, you know, she talked about starting the fourth watch prayer again. It's not going to just happen one, you know, Thursday, one Friday morning, real early at three o'clock in the morning. The Holy Spirit wakes her up, just carries her up in the Holy Ghost plane and brings her to the church and drops her and says, now do intercessory prayer. Amen. She's going to plan on it. She's going to know what date she's going to get up. She's going to set her alarm clock. Isn't it interesting? So a lot of Christians, they set their alarm clock Monday through Friday for work, but they don't set it on Sunday morning for church. Amen? Amen. Are we walking really in the fear of the Lord in that case? Amen? Praise God. So she's going to intentionally plan on it, and it's going to happen. Amen. But if we don't intentionally plan on things, it's not going to just happen. Isn't that right? Yeah. Praise God. You know, if you're planting a garden, a tomato garden, amen, you're going to plant those seeds and you're going to cultivate that soil first, get all the rocks and weeds and everything out of there. You're going to plant those seeds and you're going to water them intentionally. Yes. You're not going to say, you know, I'm really praying about a tomato garden. I want a tomato garden next year, praise God. Oh, yes. I just really hope the Lord gives me a tomato garden next year. What do you expect? The Lord to come down from heaven and plant the seeds and say, there's your tomato garden. So when we intentionally do things, that's where we have a victory, amen, in the Lord. Somebody say praise God. Somebody say intentionality, amen. Praise God. It's manifested walking in the fear of the Lord by being honest with people, amen. It's manifested by walking in the fear of the Lord by loving your neighbor as yourself. Now, how many of you know you're supposed to love yourself as a believer? I'm not talking about egotistical, uh, you know, but you're supposed to love yourself. Why? Because God Almighty has created you. You're also supposed to respect yourself. Amen. Why do a lot of people get into a lot of things and sexual sins and all these other addictions and so forth? Because they don't respect themselves. How many you know you got to respect yourself? Amen? Amen. God created you. He loves you. He's crazy about it. He thinks about you all the time. Amen. There's not a minute that goes by that God's not thinking about you. Amen? Amen? You're the head and you're not the tail, the Bible says. Amen? You have victory in your life. You are the apple of God's eye. You can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. Amen? You're on the winning team. Because when Jesus comes back in the rapture, you're going for a little ride. Somebody say hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Amen? Praise God. You're not a, you're not a person of your past. If you had a bad past, 
That's not who you are today as a believer in Christ. Behold, all things have passed away. They're dead. They're in the grave. They're buried. All things have become new. Somebody say, I am not a creature of my past. Glory to God. Amen. Matthew chapter 22, 37 to 39 says, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you, you cannot love your neighbor unless you love yourself. If the Bible's telling me I gotta love my neighbor as myself, and if I hate myself, how in the world am I gonna love my neighbor? Right? Isn't that correct? So 1 John chapter 5, chapter 1 rather, verses 5 through 7 says, This is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you. God is light, and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, how many know that's good news? Amen. Amen. How many know, praise God, how many of us like to be clean? Raise your hand. Amen. How many know, praise God, after you take a shower, you feel nice and clean? Praise God. Hallelujah. But after you, you know, you work outside the garden all day and it's like a 95 degrees and hot and humid, you're sweating, you feel dirty, and you're like, eh, you just don't feel that great. How many of you know by the blood of Jesus we are cleansed? Amen. The blood is a good thing, the blood of Jesus, amen? We are cleansed by his blood. Glory be to God spiritually, amen. 1 John chapter 2 verse 9 says, If anyone claims I am living in the light, but hates a Christian brother or sister, that person is still living in darkness. It's getting quiet now, amen. Now, how many of you know it's also important in walking in the fear of the Lord, it's important to attend our church services regularly. Whatever local church you go to, watch them by television. How many of you know it's, you, uh, attend regularly? Again, I talked about intentional things. You intentionally come to church on Sundays at 11 o'clock. Amen? Intentionally, why? Because I want to be in the presence of God. You see, too many times we get caught up in our feelings as believers. Amen? Well, I don't really feel like reading the Word right now. I, I don't really feel like praying. I don't feel like going to church. I have only been to the beach six times this past summer, and it's a beautiful day. Uh, I'm sure God will understand. I'll go ahead and worship His creation, the ocean, rather than in His house, Him. Feelings. We've got to get rid of the feelings. You see, we have our faith, and feelings follow faith. That's why the Bible says if we forgive somebody, if they've offended us and we forgive them, your feelings aren't necessarily going to line up with your confession. Amen. You may still feel ill feelings against that, about that person, but you keep on confessing they are forgiven. Lord, I have forgiven. And then the enemy comes and says, you haven't forgiven them. Look how you feel about it. You say, Aunt devil, I confess that I forgive them, and my feelings are going to eventually line up with my confession of faith. Amen. Amen. It doesn't mean you get all the goosebumps, I forgive them, hallelujah, yes, you know, let me have them over for dinner. Too many times we, we rely everything on our feelings. We've got to get rid of that mentality. It's all about faith. The woman with the issue of blood, if she, she didn't feel like pressing through the crowd when Jesus was walking down the street one day. She didn't feel like it because for 12 years she had a hemorrhage. 12 years she was bleeding internally. She was, probably had anemia. She was sick. She had a low, low blood count. She hardly had any energy. She, she just spent all of her money. She was totally broke. Doctors, everything, nobody. In fact, she was even worse after she got done with the doctors. She didn't feel like pushing through the crowd. But she believed in faith. If I touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Her feelings had to line up with her faith. So many times the Christian, they, they rely on their feelings and they have de defeat instead of victory. But how many know we want to have victory in the name of Jesus? So we walk by faith and not by sight. I can even change that around. We walk by faith and not by feelings. You're not going to feel like coming to church all the time. I'm a pastor. Uh, I'll tell you what. I, I'm a pastor. Sometimes I don't feel like coming to preach the word of God. But I say, you're going. 
Craig the flesh says, I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like preaching. I, and, then, and then I say, Craig, you're going. And you're going to be there early. You're going to study. You're going to be upstairs in your office. You're going to be praying. And you're going to be anointed in this place in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, self-discipline. Self-discipline is tied right into faith in our relationship with God. Self-discipline is tied right into our fear of the Lord and walking with Him. One person said, I don't have any self-discipline, but yet the Bible tells you as a believer, yes, you do. That's one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, Galatians. Amen? And the Word of God. So we have to exercise our self-discipline. Somebody say self-discipline. Amen. Praise God. You know, we were on vacation um, and so forth but back in July for a couple of weeks. And I was going to the, I had a good habit of going to the gym every morning, waking up at 4.30 in the morning, going to the, driving, putting my gym clothes on, going to the gym, working out, and then coming back home, do my devotions and so forth, that can get my day started. But that vacation, I could not go to the gym for those two weeks. Within those two weeks, I lost a good habit. Suddenly, my flesh was, when that alarm clock went off, was saying, you don't want to go to the gym. You're so tired. Just turn around and go back to sleep. But last Friday, I said to myself, you know something? You've got to get up and get to the gym. And again, the alarm clock goes off and says, you know what? I'm, gonna, I, I, I'm getting up in the name of Jesus. I'm getting to the gym. <laughs> and I went and I worked out and it felt really good. You see, we've got to do habits. The self-discipline has to come in. It's not that I'm going to feel like just jumping up out of bed. Hallelujah. Let's go run a mile. Hallelujah. On the treadmill. Glory to God. No. But you have to intentionally do what you want to do. If you say, I want to go on a diet, don't stop buying a bunch of pizza and ice cream and leaving it in your refrigerator and freezer. Amen. Amen. It's going to be just harder for you not to take it. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, glory to God. We got to do things intentionally as believers. Amen. Praise God. So the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 to 25, it says, now we can look forward to the salvation God has promised us. There is no longer any room for doubt. And we can tell others that salvation is ours, for there is no question that he will do what he says. Verse 24. In response to all he has done for us, let us outdo each other in being helpful and kind to each other and in doing good. Let us not neglect our church meetings, as some people do, but encourage and warn each other, especially now that the day of his coming back again is drawing near. I don't know about you, but I need you. In my relationship with God, you are very important. Because you're my brothers and sisters in Christ. You're the one who encourages me when I'm down. I'm the one who encourages you when you're down. We encourage one another. We need one another. No man is an island. There's no letter, there's no letter I in the word team. Every local church is a team. Matter of fact, the church down the street is a team with us. We're all on the same team. As long as we're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, as long as we're on the same page in the word of God, amen, how many know we're a team? The body of Christ is a team. We should all be working together to get people saved in the name of Jesus, amen? Praise God. We're a team effort. Amen. That's why people that stay home, they, they don't want to go to church. They don't want to get a, you know, a, you know, join a local church. They're doing a serious disservice to themselves. Isn't that right? Amen. And some of you watching my television, you're thinking, well, I, I know. I know what you're saying, Pastor. I've been, I've been to this church. I've been to that church. And they did this wrong. And they did that, and the second church did that wrong. And I didn't like this other church. You are never going to find a perfect church. Never. Isn't that right? How in the world are we looking for a perfect church if we're all imperfect? And in church, what we're doing is serving the one who is perfect. And his name's Jesus. Amen? Amen? Well, I thought the fans should have been on a little bit when I was in church today, but they shut them off. I'm never going back there again. You know, the pastor, he, I saw him shake three hands, but he didn't touch mine. I'm never coming there again. I don't like the color of that carpet. Look at that. I can't believe it. I ain't going back there again. Wow. You know something? When the pastor was preaching, I know he was directing it directly towards me. He was picking on me. I ain't going back there again. You know something really cool? Whenever you're convicted, when you're hearing any preacher preach the word of God, the Holy Spirit is just saying, I love you. Because conviction is a good thing, not a bad thing. Conviction is saying, Lord, thank you so much. I'm way out left field. You show me I'm way out left field. You want me right back where I'm supposed to be. 
thank you for showing me that. Amen? Amen? Praise God. I mean, it's a good thing, not a bad thing. Praise God. The devil condemns, the Holy Spirit convicts. With condemnation, there's guilt. You feel lousy. But with conviction, okay, you might feel that conviction and say, wow, but you repent and you get things right with God. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Amen. That's so awesome. Amen. Now, what about tithing? Somebody say tithing. tithing. I ain't going back to that church. I ain't going to talk about money. How many know that tithing every week is showing that we're walking in the fear of the Lord? Amen. Knowing that the tithe is God's money to keep his house running. This is God's financial plan for the local church. Tithing. Somebody say praise God. Praise God. Amen. The bills in any local church, no matter where you're at, have to be paid. What's God's way of paying them? Through the people, their faithfulness in giving the first fruits, the first 10% of their income to the Lord through their local church. Amen. Amen? That's God's plan. Amen? And I think it's a good plan. Amen. Remember a long time ago, when I was first a believer, it's like... Like 36 years ago, uh, the pastor, you know, in a, in, a, in a church was preaching about tithing. And I, I, I found out it was 10%. And I'm like, oh, 10%? Are you kidding me? You know how much money that is? Wow, that's a ton of money. I don't know if I can do this. Then each week, you know, whenever he brought up the issue of tithing, I was starting to get convicted of the Holy Spirit. Then I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to take you at your word. I'm going to start paying my tithes every week. 10% of what I make in my paycheck before taxes, before insurance, before anything's taken out is going right into your house. That check's going right into my local church where I'm at. But I say, Lord, when I run out of money, I'm going to have to stop. Well, 36 years later, here I am. I never ran out. Amen. You can't outgive God. Amen. Amen? And a tithe is only 10%. So if you want to get real radical, give even more. You'll be even more blessed. Somebody say praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is so, such an awesome God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. God is awesome. You know, Malachi chapter 3, verses 6 through 12 in the Word of God tells us about tithing. Amen. At the time, they were backslidden in that particular day. They had walked away from the Lord. Then they were questioning the Lord. What are you talking about, Lord? How in the world are you telling that we're cheating you? I mean, we're going to church all the time and, and you know, we're doing this, we're doing that. And he says, you're not giving your tithes. So he says, repent, start giving your tithes back, and come back to the Lord. Amen? We can be going through all the motions and all the right stuff, but how many know the Lord's always going to provide? Amen? The Word of God says, it says in Malachi 3, verse 6, I am the Lord, I do not change. That is why you descendants of Jacob are not already completely destroyed. Ever since the days of your ancestors, you have scorned my laws and failed to obey them. Now return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how can we return when we have never gone away? Should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me of the tithes and offerings due to me. You are under a curse, for your whole nation has been cheating me. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord Almighty, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Let me prove it to you. Your crops will be abundant, for I will guard them from insects and disease. Your grapes will not shrivel before they are ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all nations will call you blessed, for your land will be such a delight, says the Lord Almighty. Now, how many of you know there's a, there's a lot of blessings concerning tithes? Amen. Praise be to God. God is such an awesome God. That's God's plan. That's his financial plan. Amen. Praise be to God. How many of you know if we drop dead tomorrow, we're not taking our money with us? Right? Isn't that right? Oh, sure. You could, you could, you could have your will made up and say uh, to your spouse, if I died, I want you to take all my money out of my savings and I want you to put it in my grave when they lower me six feet under the ground. You're going to have an issue spending it even if it was there. But then you're going to say, why didn't I use this green stuff called money to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ? Amen. Why did I hoard it for myself? Why didn't I give it for God's purpose? Why didn't I just obey what he said and took him at his word and believe that he's going to provide for me? Amen? Somebody say praise God. Praise God. God is such an awesome God. Hallelujah. 
He's never going to come on, you know, and say, well, you know, whatever, whatever the case is. Amen. If we're alive in these bodies as believers, how many you know we've got to be working for the Lord? And everything that we have anyway is God's because he owns it all anyway. That car that you have is his. Amen. The car that you have is his. The money you have is his. The job you have is your resource. But the source of you having that resource is Jesus Christ. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God who provides. So whenever you lose the resource and they let you go, they lay you off or whatever, you go to the source and you say, Lord, I have been paying my tithes. You know what you do? You open up your Bible to Malachi chapter 3. At home or at the altar, wherever you want to do this. Put your checkbook right there, right on top of that scripture. And you tell the Lord, you know where I've been. You know I have been paying my tithes. I hold you at your word, Lord God. Now, you're not reminding God. He already knows. But your faith is growing as a result of your confession. You say if I ask, seek, and knock in Matthew 7, 7, and 8, you're going to open up the doors and I will walk for an even better job. You say in your word that, that I'm not going to lack. That I'm not going to go hungry according to your word. So I'm holding up right now, Lord God, and I'm holding you with your word. Amen. Amen. But how many you know we got to ask, seek, and knock? If somebody wanted to get inside the church building, amen, how many you know they'd have to let us know to open the door? I wouldn't go to the door and just stand there. Well, okay, waiting. Lord, I just pray that this door would be open in Jesus' name. Stupid, I said to knock, then the door will be open. If you don't make that initial first foot effort, nothing's going to happen. You make the effort, that's a walk of faith, and now God's going to open up the door. If you don't ask, you're not going to get. If you don't seek, you're not going to find. Many times we just think God's going to drop this thing out of heaven. Okay, praise the Lord, there he is. Oh, praise, there it is. Boom, he just dropped it right in my lap. And it can happen that way. Intentionally look for a job. Intentionally say, Lord, I'm believing the promises of your word. Intentionally I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. Intentionally confess that God closed one door, he's going to open up a better one. Amen? Amen? Don't let the enemy come against you and steal, kill, and to destroy. How many of you know God's got something better for you? Our God is an awesome God. Amen? Oh, glory be to God. Next, walking in the fear of the Lord. How is that manifested in everyday life? Taking our ministry seriously here at the church. Whatever ministry you have. Look at Colossians chapter 3, verses 22 to 25. The Bible says, Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything you do. Try to please them all the time, not just when they are watching you. Serve them sincerely because of your reverent fear of the Lord. What is that saying? You work in a workplace, you work as though Jesus was your boss. Well, pastor, you know, you know, my boss, he's not a Christian, and he does a lot of bad things, he yells at me. It doesn't matter. You work, work as though he's Jesus. Work as unto the Lord. Amen? Ooh, it's getting quiet. Verse 23. Work willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. That's pretty clear. Verse 23, amen? That's not a pastor's opinion, that's in the Word of God. Look at the scripture. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward, and that the master you are serving is Christ. But if you do what is wrong, you will be paid back for the wrong you have done. For God has no favorites. Somebody say, praise God. Now, that's the New Living Translation. I love to search the Bible because at my desktop I get an awesome Bible program. And it's got like about um, anywhere from 10 to 15 different translations. So when I prepare a message, I look at all those translations. Amen. And how many of you know a lot of them bring out the word even clearer? Look at the message version of Colossians 3, to 25. It says this. It says, servants, do what you're told by your earthly masters. And don't just do the minimum that will get you by. Do your best. Work from the heart for your real master, for God. Confident that you'll get paid in full when you come into your inheritance. Keep in mind always that the ultimate master you're serving is Christ. The sullen servant who does shoddy work will be held responsible. Being Christian doesn't cover up bad work. I've always told, I've always told believers, amen, you know, if, you, if, you, if the boss gives you a 15-minute break, 
Don't spiritualize it and say, well, I'm reading my Bible for half an hour. I can't believe that they got on me for that. You're wrong. You're wrong. If they give you 15 minutes, read the Bible 15 minutes, go for it. But if after that 15 minutes is done, get back to work. That's what the Bible teaches, folks. That's what I'm saying. Amen? Amen? Somebody say glory. glory. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 says, So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Amen. Somebody say, anything I do for the Lord is not useless. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let, let me get these next three done. Amen. The fear of the Lord is shown by how you treat your body. Somebody say your body. Now how many of us today have a body? Raise your hand. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's a few of us that don't have bodies today. We will be having an altar call. A body altar call after the service. Just kidding. Just kidding. Amen. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 through 20. The Bible says, But the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. It goes on to say in verse 18, Run from sexual sin. No other sin is so, clearly, so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, but God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. Amen. Now how many know we got to honor God with our body? Amen. Amen. How many know we shouldn't be putting anything in our bodies that will be harmful to us? No matter what it is. Amen. Somebody say praise God. Praise God. Amen. You know, I mean, we, we have to know and understand that, that, that if our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, amen, we've got to take care of our bodies. Amen. amen. That's correct. I mean, you know, that's, that's why the Bible goes over it all more and more and more. Amen. Next, get rid of ungodly pride. Somebody say pride. I'm running out of time. Proverbs 16, 18 says pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before a fall. Amen. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud. How I many know love is not proud? Amen. By not being lazy. I'll conclude with that. 2 Corinthians 3 and 10 says, Even while we were still there with you, we gave you this rule. He who does not work shall not eat. 1 Corinthians 5, 14 goes on to say, Dear brothers, warn those who are lazy. Comfort those who are frightened. Take tender care of those who are weak. And be patient with everyone. I mean, our church, we need to be patient with everyone. I know it's difficult driving in Massachusetts and trying to be patient. Isn't that right? Somebody cuts you off on the street or they don't use the directional or they do use the directional and you think they're going to turn and you pull out in front of them and they hit you and then you say, well, to the police officer, well, he had his directional on. I thought he was turning. And then he says, well, I, I didn't know it was on. I put it on five exits ago and I forgot to turn it off. Amen? Or whatever the case might be, amen? How many know, praise God, that when you get in your automobile, pray that God would bring you to your destination? Amen. When your kids start driving, it never, I never get to pray in more than when my kids started going to driver's ed. Bless God. They took the car out for the first time alone. Oh, brother, did I start praying. I didn't care about the car. The car can be replaced. Amen? But I cared about them. And I also cared about the people on the road that they were driving on, too. Because I didn't want them to, you know, uh, be looking at the cell phone or whatever and all of a sudden hit a pedestrian trying to cross the street or, or you know, rear-ending somebody or whatever the case is. Amen? But I, I just, you know, I started praying. And, and how many know that I believe that we can pray a hedge of protection around ourselves according to the Word of God? Amen. Study the book of Job. Satan says you put a hedge around Job and his family and his finances. I can't get to him unless you remove the hedge. What was the hedge? It was holy angels that God put around. No, the devil couldn't get to him. So if that's the case, we can pray a hedge of protection around our families. Amen? And God to go ahead and to protect us. Amen? Glory to God. We can pray a hedge. In the book of Hosea, it says to pray a hedge of thorns around this person that was doing evil. What does that mean? How many of you know thorns aren't that good? But again, it's a hedge. Amen? So if you do a study in the Word of God concerning hedges, you can, you can get a lot out of the Word. Amen? So how many know, church, I just want to encourage you. And you're the only one that can take a spiritual inventory of your own self. Walk in the fear of the Lord in your life. Don't wait for somebody else to start walking in the fear of the Lord for you to start walking in the fear of the Lord. Walk in the fear of the Lord no matter what. Do what the Word of God teaches. Do what's right. Amen?
No matter what the world says, don't go by what the majority of people are doing. Go by what God says according to his word. Amen? You don't see some people that came to church today? You come to church. Don't worry about what other people... You pray for them. Encourage them to come next Sunday. But you be here. Amen? How many know we got to be used of the Lord in the highest capacity in the name of Jesus? Amen? In church, how many know we want to get our services started on time? Praise God. we got to get here early to prepare whatever ministries we have. Amen? We're, we're, we're worshiping our master at 11 o'clock. Amen? We want to be ready to praise and magnify and, and magnify and praise his mighty name. Amen? Let's stand up and close with a word of prayer. Sister Nelly comes up to close in the last song. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you. We praise your mighty name. We thank you, Lord, that we can walk in the fear of you, Lord God. Help us, Lord, to walk in the fear of you like never before. Help us to reverence and respect, Lord, our parents. Help us to reverence and respect godly people, pastors, Lord God, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Help us, Lord God, to listen to them. Help us, Lord God, to grow in our relationship with you. Help us to take the things of you, Lord God, seriously. Even, Lord, your house. Let us never throw trash on the ground. This is your house. Help us to treat your house, Lord, even better than our own houses, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, we would not be building paneled walls in our own house when we're neglecting the house of the Lord. I pray, Lord God, that we would just move forward in you in the name of Jesus and that we put you first in all things. Your word tells us in Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto to us. And Lord God, we just thank you for that. We praise your mighty name, Lord God. We pray that this church would grow. Lord, we pray that we can share your word in this lost and dying world. We pray that we can make disciples, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you would have your perfect way and will, Lord God. We pray for the live worship team, Lord God. We pray in Jesus' name that we would glorify your mighty name. We pray for intercessors to be raised up. I pray, Lord God, if we've got out of good habits in the past, we get back into those godly good habits, Lord God, and start praying and come out at night and magnify your mighty name at fourth watch Lord God establish the Bible studies again let us dig into your word Lord God let us grow deeper in our relationship with you and father we thank you for that Lord we magnify your mighty name even in the name of Jesus we pray and now God's people said amen and amen and sister Nell life repair life repair when we all get to heaven Oh, what a day of rejoicing that will be, that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. What we do the throne before us, soon his beauty will be hold. So walk the streets of gold Oh, when we all get to heaven Oh, what a day of rejoicing that will be That will be when we all see Jesus We will sing and shout the victory when we all get to heaven Oh, what a day of rejoicing that will be That will be when we all Oh, see Jesus We'll sing and shout the victory I'll get to heaven What a day that will be, that will that will be, be when we all just see Jesus. We will sing and shout the victory. We serve what a mighty God we serve. Yes, For in your bow before him and heaven and earth adore him. Oh, what a mighty God. Oh, he does bow before him, 
heaven and earth adore him. Jesus is the God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. Oh, he does bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. So what a mighty God we Flow from his throne unto his own, his anthem we raise. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King. Whoa, 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 majesty, oh, worship his majesty. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King. Oh, 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 majesty. Oh, majesty. Worship his majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Majesty, majesty, worship his majesty. majesty. 